After years of being asked for a full-length animations course, I'm so excited to announce that I finally have one based on the sequence that you just saw. I've been building this monster of a course out for two years already, so check out the link below for details. And hey, if you're just here for a cool animation trick, stick around because I'll show you how to do the very first part of this sequence, which I call the bounce. The bounce effect adds a dash of spice to your boring old motion path. So let's begin by putting in our text. So we go to insert up here and choose text box, draw it in, and start by writing in our P. And it's black on black right now, so you can't really see it yet. But let's change the color to yellow so that we can. And I wanted to use a thick, narrow font. In this case, I chose uh, Gil Sans MT Extra Condensed, as you can see here, to make the letters more uniform in width, as you'll see in a little bit. Now make this letter nice and big. I got it all the way to 287 point font. <laughs> you can use the same font that I used if you have it on your computer, or if you want, use a similar tall, narrow font with letters of similar width. Okay, now that we have our first letter, let's duplicate it four times by hitting Control D. And let's distribute these across the slide doesn't have to be perfect at all. We'll fix it in, in a little bit. And now replace the P's with the O, W, E, and R. You can now see how the letters are indeed very similar in width. So to even this out, let's select everything by clicking and dragging our mouse over everything, then going to Arrange, Align, then making sure Align to Slide is checked. If it's not checked, then check it and come back to this menu. Since we have that done, uh, we now just say Distribute Horizontally. So they're all well distributed across the slide. Now one final time, go to Arrange, Align again, and say Align Middle this time. Now everything is nice and even in the center of the slide, so we can begin the trick. Good. Now we want these letters to actually come from outside the slide and end up here. The P, W, and R come in from the top, and the O and the E come in from the bottom. For a really easy way to do it, we could simply add a fly in entrance effect by going to the animation tab and choosing fly in. Super easy, but it won't have that cool little bounce at the end, which is the whole point. Let's just hit Control Z to undo that. So to get the bounce, we have to use a motion path. It's a little more complicated, but it's actually worth doing because it's a technique that can be very useful for animation later on. The typical way to do the motion path would be to actually drag the letters off the slide, then go to the animation tab and add a motion path down and drag the path into place, hoping it ends up where you want it to. And version 2013 onward actually makes this easier because it gives you that nice motion path preview that you see here. However, this technique isn't great either because for the next sequence, we have to have the letters in the exact position that we had them earlier, not even a tiny bit off, which you risk with this method. So let's hit Control Z again to undo that and get the P back in its place. Actually, in this case, the best way to go about it is to add a motion path to the P again. Then go to Effect Options and make it go upward. And click and drag the motion path off the screen and make it land in the place you want the P to start from. It's a little bit weird, but you'll see why we're doing this. <laughs> By the way, if you want to make the motion path line straight while you're dragging, just hold down the Shift key at the same time. Okay, now that we have that, 
The trick is actually going to be to reverse the direction of the motion path. So it'll start at the top, but go down to this exact spot. So we go to Effect Options and click on the little bottom arrow, scroll down and choose Reverse Path Direction. Now this is what it'll do. However, since the letter has no entrance effect, when you go to play it, it will start on the screen for half a second here, then go off screen and come back with the motion path, even though we actually want it to start completely off the screen and then come in. So let's fix that. To do that, we just go to Add Animation and add an Appear Entrance to the P. This will guarantee that the P will appear off screen first, then move downward. Now just click and drag the Appear to be before the motion path. And in terms of timing, let's select both of these by clicking and holding down Shift or Control and make them both start with previous. This makes both of them start at the beginning of the slide and then start at the same time as the other. Change the timing of the motion path to one second. Now let's give the motion path that little bounce that we saw earlier, which is the whole reason that we're doing motion paths here in the first place. So we go to Effect Options. This time, click on the little square under the arrow and first of all, take out the smooth start and smooth end. Now add a bounce effect here. For the one second duration that we have, I recommend the bounce being 0.7, just from what worked for me and what I did for the intro video, but you can play around with it if you want. Okay, now the P looks great, starts off the screen, then comes in with that bounce. So let's spread this animation to the other letters. So if we have PowerPoint 2010 or later, the easiest way to do this is to use the animation painter here, which copies the animations from one object to another. And to do this, we click on the P and then we double click on the animation painter over here. And it works by the way, just like the, the format painter, which copies the format of one object to another. So then we just click on the W and the R. So now both the motion path and the appear animation will be copied, as you can see on the timeline. And of course, we can also use the animation painter to, to do the same thing for the O. And we'll just have to change the motion path here. Um, hold shift again and pull it down. Then make sure the O is selected. Then use the Animation Painter again, double click, and then click on the E to transfer everything. If you have an earlier version of, of PowerPoint that doesn't have the Animation Painter, um, there's two things that you can do. You can either recreate all of the animations on every letter, which is actually not too tough since we just have five letters, but actually let me show you an even easier workaround. First, we insert the P just like we did before. But this time, instead of, instead of duplicating and aligning like what we did previously, we actually add the animations right to the P before we do anything else. So add the motion path and the appear animation. Only after you're done with that, do you then duplicate the P and then align everything and then change the letters. Of course, you'll have to adjust the motion path on the O and the E, just like we did before, but otherwise the process is the same. So essentially, this is all the same steps that we did, just in a little bit of a different order. So the good news is that this is a great workaround for previous versions. Okay, so the good thing is once we have all this done, we don't have to do anything else to the timings here since it's all start with previous. So let's see what it looks like. Perfect, we're finally done with these letters. And that wraps up the very first part of this long animation sequence. Hope you enjoyed that little bit, regardless of whether you're interested in the full course. And of course, if you are, the link to that is in the description below. So thanks so much for watching, especially if you stuck with me all the way to the end. 
Please comment, like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos. And of course, see you for my next one.